one of Diddy's accusers uh, now has gone to police, and that might not be Diddy. When first hearing this, might be like, "Well, what's the big deal?" This is the woman who sued him, claiming that in the early 2000s she accused Diddy of trafficking her at his white parties. Some of them in Miami, some in, in New York. She has now filed a report with police. So you know, she filed the lawsuit first, which this, we told you about that lawsuit. Right. But now she's gone to police to sort of put it on the record with them that these are my allegations about what happened in Miami Beach. Right. So she's filed that. The statute of limitations is probably run. But here's why Diddy really will be concerned about this, because she went to the police last week, sat down and had a conversation with him. Uh, Adria English is her name. And Adria um, told police much of the same allegations that were in the lawsuit. Right. Uh, she just separated out the ones that would have occurred, allegedly occurred in Miami Beach. But uh, the police said, look, there's not much we can do with this. Right. But they decided that they can share this information with other law enforcement, and that's where Diddy may be concerned. Charles, the issue here is uh, whether or not these uh, allegations will have any bearing on the federal investigation into Diddy. As you know, he's being investigated for sex trafficking, drug trafficking, and uh, other federal uh, crimes. The question is how her allegations will ultimately impact yeah, if they have any the right. federal well, look, it's not like the, the feds law enforcement they obviously knew about these claims it, it it's not going to help diddy i mean th obviously yeah. that that's without question it's just a matter of does it hurt him Will at all hurt. And, if, and if it does how much does it hurt him I mean, right so you know you'd imagine that adrian english went in to miami beach pd and gave them some names of people who were involved in right. this um well now miami beach pd will be sharing that those names and that information with the feds and then who knows where they go from it. But while they're in the middle of this very intense investigation, uh, convening a grand jury, trying to get an indictment against Diddy, uh, any one witness could be the one who unlocks this finally right. for the feds. It, you would imagine they're not there yet because there hasn't been an indictment. Right. So they're if still they had it, they'd indict him, Charles. I mean, that, that, that much is clear. They're, right. they're going after him. They don't have it yet or else we'd know. Catherine Escalera, Lancaster, Pennsylvania. How many more are out there? You guys are right. That's exactly what it is. It could be a floodgate opening. You never know where this is going. He's already in court. So the lawyers are definitely going to be looking for more victims. You know, <laughs> they're out there and right. uh, they're going to come through it. This could get bad. Right. As they begin talking to other people now, to Charles's point, who knows what they uncover? So, yeah, it'd be interesting to see. That's respectable. So my last question for the smoke, um, are you still the amp of daddy? I'm not. I said I was going to tell my truth. I think that it, it really, really, really hurt me because I just feel like, you know, Puff was a really, really good person to me. I feel like he came and he helped me and, you know, he elevated me and he saw a lot of things in me. And I feel like that's like one of his specialties. Like, he know how to like, find people and you know identify their talent and he was able to see more than music music mm -hmm. in me and I felt like he brought out another side of me like he brought out like my chitsu side mm -hmm. like you know my woman side like it was like a lot of things that I didn't see in me that he brought out of me you know like baby girl you more than music you are you are icon you a motherfucking mogul mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying like put God first make sure you keep God with everything that you do but I just felt like when all these things came out, I just needed to take a break and focus on what's important. It was just me and my career mm -hmm. and my family and just, you know, let him navigate and figure it out on his own because I can't be caught up in that. Although he was so great to you and you didn't experience that, you still feel like just with everything that's transpiring, in order for you to soar or to keep elevating, you need to disassociate yourself. It is not in order for me to keep soaring or, you know, to elevate myself. I just feel like, although that wasn't my experience and he was such a good person to me and that's what people don't understand about like me and Puff relationship. They was just like, you were so loud and you made him a part of your brand and, you know, like, you, 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 you just thought that you had something and it wasn't that because I think the same thing with him like he didn't expect to 
fall in love with me because we did end up falling in love with each other. Mm-hmm. And I just feel like, you know, it's just everything that's going on. Like, I don't want to get caught up in that. And I just need a moment to just... It's like an African champ. Ain't no more to do. What the fuck you doing? But I knew that it was God talking to me. You know what I'm saying? Because of the way it made me feel emotionally. I broke down, started crying all over the place in the car. And I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I was thinking about trying to do this to somebody. Because it was really in my heart to kill him. Millions and millions of dollars. Now, a lot of folks don't believe that, Craig. Believe hmm? You had a lot of the story from you. Hmm? The devil tried to steal your soul, too. Yes, amen. But we took care of that, Dee. Yes, <laughs> So Rolling Stone just dropped a bombshell investigative report that sheds new light on the tragic story of Craig Mack, the first artist who ever dared to walk away from Bad Boy. And just when we thought we'd heard it all, 50 Cent, who's been working on that highly anticipated documentary about Diddy, has spilled even more tea, revealing shocking new details about how Craig Mack's life took a terrifying nosedive after crossing paths with Diddy. First, it was the nightmare of working under Diddy's thumb at Bad Boy. And when Craig finally managed to escape, he ended up falling into the clutches of a doomsday cult that pre- and in this lawsuit, he claims that essentially P. Diddy was the Epstein of the rap industry. How is she making all this money? Oh, because she owns it? And because it's indication? Hold on tight because we've got some jobbing news about Oprah Winfrey that you won't believe. Rumor has it, Oprah might be tangled up in a shocking crime involving none other than Diddy. That's right. The queen of daytime TV is under fire and the entertainment world is buzzing with questions about her integrity. In this video, we'll spill all the juicy details about Oprah's alleged shady dealings, her controversial connections with Hollywood elites, and explosive feuds with celebrities like Monique and Tara G. P. Hansen. Plus, we'll uncover her ties to infamous figures like Harvey Weinstein and John of God. Is Oprah's spotless image? Just a facade, stick around to find out the scandalous secrets the media won't tell you. Um, so, uh, this is just crazy. Just read, read. So, as the story unfolds, the connection between Oprah and Diddy's controversial activities starts to take a darker turn. Could it be that the beloved media mogul is more deeply entwined in Hollywood's underbelly than we ever imagined? One insider revealed that Oprah was allegedly seen attending some of Diddy's infamous freak off parties. This leads us to the question, what was Oprah doing there? And what does this mean for her pristine public image? That is... <laughs> I know what usually happens at the Diddy party, or what we told this happened at the Diddy parties. Interestingly enough, the whispers in Hollywood suggest that Oprah's attendance was not merely social. There are rumors that she might have known about the hidden cameras Diddy had installed in his property. As the lawsuit against Diddy claims, he stashed hidden cameras in every room, capturing high-profile celebrities in compromising situations without their knowledge. This raises the eyebrow, or to possibility, did Oprah know about these secret recordings, and did she use them to her advantage? About P. Diddy? I think industry talk, there's a lot of people who, you know, who have worked for him. There's been stories around, which is, you know, not necessarily unusual. And I remember, like, I don't know if you know his, his what his voice sounds like, but like, I felt like I was in the presence of his monster inside. In a shocking twist, some sources have hinted that Oprah might have had more than just a passive role. Allegations have emerged that she could have used her connections to shield certain celebrities from legal repercussions. One speculative scenario suggests Oprah might have brokered deals to keep these damaging tapes under wraps, ensuring the involved celebrities' careers remain unscathed. Could this be the real reason why so many prominent figures are fiercely loyal to her? I can't wait. I can't wait for everybody to find out what's really been going on in the background. Adding fuel to the fire, the rumors about Oprah's involvement have caused a stir among her celebrity peers. Celebrities like Monique and Tara G.P. Henson, who have previously spoken out against Oprah, seem to be more vocal now. Monique, in particular, has hinted at knowing the real Oprah, and Tara G. has cryptically mentioned Hollywood's double standards possibly alluding to this scandal. And if I can't fight for them coming up behind me, then what the f am I doing? I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. No, don't apologize. <laughs> Don't apologize. Could it be that their grievances were not just professional, but deeply personal, rooted in this web of deceit and manipulation? This leads us to the broader implications of this bombshell. Oprah's ties to notorious figures like Harvey Weinstein and John of God have already raised eyebrows. If these new allegations hold any truth, it could mean that Oprah's carefully curated image of a benevolent media queen might be nothing more than a facade. What no one expected was that the woman who has inspired millions could be hiding such dark secrets. As the scandal deepens, one can't help but wonder how Oprah will navigate this storm. Will she address these rumors head on, or will she rely on her media oof? It was completely outside of my frame of reference. I've been in show business since I was 14, and uh, I've heard the stories mm-hmm. of what happened. Tell her. I would say, Oprah Winfrey, you know what you need to do, and stop hiding behind 
what you call was negative comments. This revelation also opens up a Pandora's box of questions about Hollywood's elite circles. If Oprah, a figure synonymous with integrity, can be implicated in such allegations, who else might be involved? This leads us to speculate. Could there be a larger network of influential figures pulling the strings behind these sordid affairs? One can only imagine the lengths to which some might go to protect their secrets. The entertainment world is abuzz with these revelations, and as more details come to light, the intrigue only grows. Diddy's already tarnished reputation is at risk of being completely destroyed, and Oprah's association with him only drags her deeper into the mire. As we uncover more layers of this scandal, the implications for both their legacies could be profound. The issue is, it seems as though he wants to kind of like exert power and dominance over people who don't really want it. But for many, this news about Oprah is not new. There have long been whispers about her behavior and conflicts, suggesting she might not be the philanthropist she pretends to be, but rather a manipulative, cruel gatekeeper of the industry, capable of committing any crime for the sake of profit. As we delve deeper into these allegations, it's impossible to ignore the numerous celebrity feuds Oprah has been embroiled in. Take, for instance, her long-standing feud with 50 Cent. He has openly criticized Oprah for being completely against everything that was in my music, calling her out for her perceived hypocrisy. 50 Cent even named one of his dogs Oprah in a pointed jab at the media mogul. I'm gonna be honest with you. I didn't have anything against Oprah. Called up Gish. I'm gonna tell you why. You named your dog Oprah, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I did. <laughs> this conflict showcases a pattern of Oprah using her influence to silence voices she disagrees with, rather than fostering the open dialogue she claims to champion. Then there's Monique, who has been vocal about her grievances with Oprah. The comedian accused Oprah of blackballing her after Monique refused to participate in the promotional tour for the film Precious. Monique's candid interviews reveal a darker side of Oprah, one that is willing to ostracize those who don't fall in line with her demands. They give it all these titles except what it really is, Monique said, referring to the industry's labeling of her as difficult when she stood her ground. Could Oprah's public persona be a well-crafted mask, hiding her ruthless methods of maintaining control? Now I begin to see commercials with my brother, my mother, my father, and my other brother. The allegations don't stop there. Steele's accusation that Oprah knew about Harvey Weinstein's misconduct for decades adds another layer to this complex narrative. Steele's scathing Instagram post implied that Oprah, despite her public condemnation of Weinstein, was well aware of his predatory behavior and chose to stay silent. This raises unsettling questions about Oprah's moral compass. Was she complicit in protecting powerful men like Weinstein, thereby enabling their horrific actions? Adding to the controversy, Rose McGowan accused Oprah of being as fake as they come, highlighting her past associations with Weinstein and Russell Simmons. McGowan's blunt criticism points to a pattern where Oprah appears to align herself with powerful figures, only to distance herself when their crimes are exposed. It's a chilling thought. How many more dark secrets does Oprah hold? And at what cost has she maintained her empire? Interestingly enough, Oprah's connection to the Brazilian healer John of God, who has been convicted of multiple inappropriate assaults, further taints her image. Describe yourself as a spiritual medium. What does that mean, a medium? Once touted by Oprah as a miracle worker, John of God was later revealed to be a predator who exploited his followers. Oprah's endorsement undoubtedly played a role in legitimizing him, leading one to wonder how much she knew about his nefarious activities. That Diddy put out the hit on Tupac. Gotta have Keefe D say and point to some kind of evidence, which I don't think he could, that Diddy put out the hit on Tupac. Yeah, they gonna press him. They pressing him so bad, and I don't know if I should say this, that a couple of weeks ago, a week or two ago, they beat him up in jail. The cops. I've had cases, and I hadn't worked for Diddy for years. You understand? And the prosecutor gonna say, Diddy former bodyguard. Get in the shootout. Did he form a bodyguard? Threaten a person's life or did this and did that? Because it glamorized the case. Surviving Diddy, episode Cassie. <laughs> hey, Cassie. I can't do it anymore, Bishop. What can't you do? I. Well, come on, spill it now. <laughs> the freak offs. Oh, my God, you talking about the freak offs. You came in to talk <laughs> about free golfs. He has me doing the free golfs almost every night. Them free golfs have brought many a people together. Me and my wife in particular have come to love the free golfs. Okay. Now, Cassie, you know you'll never find a nail another man to do what Diddy done did for you. Oh, don't nobody say that nail nutter like you, Bishop. Oh, you like that nail nutter? Mm, you know I do. Say it one more time, Pastor. Come here, woman. Come here. Nail nutter. Oh shit, and now another, another hot ring. Mm. Oh yeah, now listen girl, you go get up on one of them pews like I like you. Mm, that's what you want me? Ooh, oh, I'll be waiting. I'll be there in a minute, go on now. Mm. Now Cassie, I'm gonna need you to go on home now, right? 
get on that white fingernail polish for tonight, cause me and my wife was thinking about stopping by getting one of them freak offs on tonight now, so you better get yourself together. You're not here to help me. I am helping you, woman. <laughs> Helping you by not telling Diddy about this here. As we all know what's gonna happen if I tell Diddy. Remember what happened last time, right? I can't take this anymore. Cassie, where you going? Cassie, come here. Cassie. Last thing I remember was that smile. So in the court documents you said there were so many drugs it was like candy. Did Diddy also force you to take these drugs? Force me? Um, no. Wait, so you took these drugs willingly? Of course, doesn't everyone? Um, no <laughs> Cassie. Some people are forced to take them against their will. Oh, well I'm the victim. Can't you see I'm the victim here? We just want to quiet all the skeptics out there. Like, for instance, you were with Diddy since, what do I have here, 2006? So that means that you would have seen everything that happened with Justin Bieber and countless other victims. Why didn't you speak out? Are they not victims too? Um, well, uh... What's this? Wait! Cassie, these are the flight logs. It says here you've been to every island over five times. Would you like to explain? Maybe help out some of the other victims? Cassie? Cassie? We need you to answer these questions, Cassie. Please, help us feel sorry for you. 